Our gospel reading comes from John chapter 11. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her weeping. And the Jews who had come along with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could he not have opened the eyes of the blind man and kept this man from dying? And Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Mar Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time the odor is bad and for he has been there four days. Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you are always hearing me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and the cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Here ends our gospel reading. Will you pray with me, please? Oh, God. You are stirring among us, and we can feel your energy. And we can feel the children of all generations as they are in your world doing the work of breathing in and breathing out. They are the living, and we thank you, O oh God. May you surround us also with your living word. May the words that are spoken today be the words you intend for your listeners to hear, and in hearing, together we will share. We pray this in your name, Christ Jesus, and we all say, amen. Today, our thoughts and prayers are with those who are remembering someone who has passed away, someone who has died. In the past year, I don't know about you, but I go farther back when I remember. And although it's been over a decade, I can remember as if it is today going to the church and hearing the bell rung in honor of my father, sinner now claimed as saint. On this day, we remember what we have lost. We together, I, you, we are sorry for this loss, our loss, and we remember Sometimes these stories, when we remember, have very little resemblance to the farewells that we see on epic TV shows. Those farewells where someone is on their, on their last breath and they're in their bed or they're on the battlefields and they reach out and they say some amazing thing. If you have been near the bedside of someone who is dying, there is rarely one last word. Why? Because they are doing the work the very challenging and difficult work of letting go, saying goodbye, doing the work now of the dying. What is your story today? And how do you encounter your story of loss today with also the energy of today? Last night there were still trick-or-treaters outside as we came out for worship. That energy still going. There's maybe one more door to knock on. Or is your energy today? Are you already thinking of all your to-do lists, of what you can get accomplished on this afternoon when the sun will shine brightly? Was it, or is it sometimes the energy used up by simply getting awake? Now, I kind of laughed this morning. I've, I've joked about this now for a few years. You'll know when Pastor Katie has, has, has said, this is how and when church should start, when it starts an hour later. I'm in cahoots with daylight savings. 
We all had that extra hour when now we got to see the sun rise on our way in. How are you with your energy intertwined with just being in the work of the living? Getting up, getting dressed, getting to school, getting to work, going out and doing your errands, preparing, preparing for guests maybe to come later this month. Maybe you got all worried this morning, you looked at your clock and it wasn't the right time. Your energy spent trying to get re resettled into this is now the time that God says awake and go to sleep. I don't know about you, but maybe this afternoon you're hoping that the lawn will dry up a little bit and you can begin that, that task of raking the leaves, one more mowing. And dare I say, looking for snow shovels and getting prepared for what is ahead. Maybe all of your energy has been spent in cheering on your favorite teams. Maybe it's been about preparing for auditions, plays. There is energy being spent, and yet today we catch our breath and we remember. And in the midst of all of our life, God encounters us with this passage when Mary and Martha are in the midst of their very full lives. It is there in the, the doing of living they encounter this very serious story about the work of the dying. When we hear this story, we are invited too, though, to hear how Jesus reacts. He looks around the people. See, this isn't about him looking at Lazarus and knowing his own loss. He was looking at Mary and Martha. He was looking at the crowd, and he is troubled. He is deeply moved and he weeps, the Son of God weeping at loss. But there's more to come. And Jesus in his tears knows this promise is going to be fulfilled. Let's sit back and reconnect right where we are. So we have a clear picture that this passage happens in the midst of his ministry, yet foreshadowing what is to come. Did you hear? Lazarus is in a tomb, in a cave, with a great stone in front of it. And the Son of God says, no, this is not how the story ends. Roll the stone away. Foreshadowing, telling us there is more with his own story of life and death yet to come. When we think of Mary and Martha... If you've heard these names before, often Mary and Martha, the story of doing is shared with us. Sometimes when we hear the story of Martha, we're a little bit scolded for those of us who like to have our ho homes prepared for guests. See, Martha is often known as the hostess with the mostest. She's got it all figured out. But when the Savior comes into her house, She's so busy doing that she doesn't have a chance to listen. And then there's Mary. Mary gets a, the, the tagline, hey, the one who listens, the one who sits at his feet. But it is Martha today we hear. It is Martha who connects the dots of the world of the living to the world everlasting. Let's step back. If we were to go as far back to passage in this Gospel of John to chapter or verse 17, we hear on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. It was Mary who stayed home. Lord, Martha says to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus says to her, your brother will rise again. Stop. He shares with us the promise fulfilled for all of us. Lazarus, you and I... The sinners now, saints, will rise again. Martha answers. 
Martha answers with, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus says to her, ready? Listen. Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. She replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into this world. See, Jesus and Martha, they're having the big, epic talk. No Hollywood moment. They are talking about life and death. And in this moment of life and death, instead of asking God for this, that, and the other thing on her to-do list, she proclaims her faith. Do you believe? Yes, Lord, I believe. Instead of pointing to the work, Jesus reminds us of the purpose of ministry, that God will be revealed in the midst of our everyday energies, everyday life. Martha is hurting. Martha is remembering what she has lost. And yet, she gets the bigger picture. She's connecting the dots that all of her doing, all of her joys, all of her sorrows are bringing her closer to God. And in doing so, as others witness how she is a shining light, they bring others to know Christ. She is a sinner. There is no perfection mentioned in our stories. And yet she is a shining light for God's message. Now Mary comes on the story. How does Mary react? Oh, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She is lamenting. She's crying. Jesus sees her weeping, and he weeps too. He knows what is ahead. He knows that if they knew what he knew, that the promise of eternal life is about to be fulfilled. Martha proclaims it to be true before she witnesses her own brother being risen from the dead. She has faith. Today on All Saints Day, we had the joy of baptizing a little one into the, into the family, the journey to begin now of faith and and yes, our little one, now washed clean, is still going to mess up. And let's not just make it nicey. This child is going to sin, just like you and I sin. But in that moment, washed clean, the light, the light comes. The Holy Spirit comes and descends on our little one, saying, here are the gifts that are given to you for the work of God's ministry, for the work of the kingdom. They knew it to be true. When we come to a funeral or a memorial service or even by the graveside, we pray with sure, sure confidence. We pray like Mary does, like Martha did. We pray, we believe, we don't understand it. God is uncontainable. We know that God cannot be completely explained because there is so much more. But we believe, we surrender. It could be true. Washed clean, invited now to dine on the finest meal ever. The meal where all will be welcomed. Not in perfection, but with our flaws. Encountering God in the body and blood, in the bread and the wine, we encounter God, seals the deal, connects the dots. You were made out of love for a purpose, to show God's love to others. We were not made to just sit here. We were made to even go. Lazarus is resurrected from the dead and yet, when it's all done, Jesus says, let him go. Let him witness God's glory, not glory of our own making. Today, there's an opportunity for you to, to, 
turn in your time and talent sheets. And in doing so, we commit to the work of doing the work of the living, the work of kingdom building, not for our glory. We have four or 500 people gathering together in the midst right here for a joyful day that was not for our glory. So we can say, look who we are. It was look what God can do with our hands, our feet, our voice. When we gather together, we are indeed better together. We together serve God's kingdom. Maybe it's the first time you've ever filled out this form, or maybe it's a form that still seems foreign to you. Maybe you have another church home, or maybe you're longing for a church home. You are part of God's kingdom. God is not waiting around for you to say, I believe. God says first, I loved you first, I believe in you always, and I claim you for life everlasting. Sinner now saint. God believes in us first. We put up all sorts of distractions trying to, to say, no, God, not me. And God says, yes. Yes. We have an opportunity then to, in, to respond like Mary and Martha. Yes, we believe. Today your heart might be full and heavy, remembering loss, so it's up to us, the brothers and sisters of Christ, to celebrate, to lift up praises when some of our brothers and sisters are silent. That is the body of Christ. When you turn in your time and talent sheet, you are saying, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I will serve you. Yes, Lord, I am here as your servant. God acting out in the greatest act of service ever, giving of his own life, beaten, condemned, hung on a cross, thrown in a tomb. But remember, he will not be there. Do not leave God in the death of this living world. Claim God along with the promise for you and for me we have life everlasting. Martin Luther was asked once, Martin Luther, the, the theologian that we get a lot of our grounding from, Martin Luther was asked, you know, hey, Lord, Martin Luther, you talk a lot about the end of the world coming. What, what, what should we do? If the world is going to end, what should we do? Martin Luther said, go plant a tree. What? How can that be? If the world's going to end tomorrow, if it's all about the doom and gloom, if every TV station, every newsletter has told you this is the worst of times, and yet Christ says, do you believe in me? Where are you going to go with this? Martin Luther says, go plant a tree. That is when we do the work of the living, knowing the grace of God will cover all, cover all our acts, for God's own glory. Plant a tree, how about you sign up and help? Small group leader, teacher, lift up and be in the prayer ministry. Maybe there's some other opportunity that wasn't on the list, write it down. We are better together when we remember why we were made. We were made for the purpose of God's ministry, for God's glory. Today we embrace the gift of life. There is no way around it. We will die. Our earthly bodies will indeed die. But we live in confidence that the hope of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Not work of our work, but God's gift of grace. God served us. We have an opportunity to serve one another with our hearts, our hands, our feet our voice, not to reveal our glory, but to give God our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Oh God, thank you for the gift, the gift of being asked to serve, to serve in your glory, for your kingdom, 
Thank you, God, for loving us first. Not in any way, not a because love, but loving us first, and no matter what, promising uh, to love us for eternity. May we confidently say we believe it to be true. Help us to be the servants you have designed us to be, serving your world for your glory. We pray this in all things, in Jesus Christ, amen.